Greetings, everyone. I'm Martina, founder of Finding Treasure, the journey home through oracle cards and astrology. Discovered in 1977, Chiron is classified as both a minor planet and a comet, and is named after the centaur Chiron in Greek mythology. It has also come to be known as the wounded healer, or as astrologer Martin Lass calls it, the planet of healing. Astrologically, Chiron shows where and how there have been woundings in our life. If we are willing, this awareness can lead to a turning point so that healing can take place in our life. With Chiron, we learn that our greatest strength in healing comes from our greatest wound. If we have the courage to embrace our woundedness with love and compassion, with gentleness and self-care. For me, Chiron is in Aquarius in my fourth house, the house of home. This house is ruled by Cancer, which is the fourth sign of the zodiac. Ever since Chiron went retrograde on July the 4th, I've been called to delve deeper and look at perhaps my deepest wounds of all around home, food, eating, cooking, and self-nurturing. I discovered Martin Lass, an astrologer who is well known in the area of spiritual astrology and whose specialty for the last 14 years has been Chiron. He wrote a wonderful book, Chiron, Healing Body and Soul. And in reading the book, I've discovered many things about myself. Describing the wound in cancer, Martin writes, the search for our roots, the reunification with the mother and or for the cosmic bosom, the wellspring of creation, the source of love. Ultimately, the search for the love within. This deep wound would express itself in my life when I was searching for love outside myself, feeling abandoned, like I didn't belong, feeling like I was an afterthought, that I was unloved or not deserving of love. There was always an emptiness and ache that nothing could fill. Attracted to partners who could not fully commit to a relationship, tendency to sabotage relationships, to withdraw from love, to withdraw love. Conversely, trying to rescue others, taking care of them, soothing their pain, putting their needs first, going to great lengths to try to obtain the love of others. I could not escape the wound. Nothing could fill the emptiness, not work, not involvement in charities, not entering a religious community, not food, relationships, staying up late, taking care of others, service work, nothing could fill it. Emmanuel Dogger says, we are often conditioned to put ourselves last. And by doing so, we end up manifesting things like resentment, struggle, sadness, depression, exhaustion, and more. By making ourselves the top priority in our lives, we no longer look outside of ourselves to fill a void. We understand that the only reason why there was a void in the first place was because we weren't choosing to give to ourselves fully. This is what it means to make ourselves a priority, to give to ourselves fully and freely in ways that nurture, heal, and empower us to show up in the world from our most authentic and true self. Sounds a bit selfish, doesn't it? But I've learned from the wisdom of flight attendants, I need to put my oxygen mask on first. If I don't take care of myself, I will be unable to take care of those who need me to be of service to others. I always had a reason why I didn't have the time or energy to look after myself. I had too much work to do. I was too tired at the end of the day. I didn't have the time. I had to take care of my husband. His needs came first. I had all the pets to look after. Well, now I have no more excuses as to why I continue to neglect abandon myself. Putting it simply, I don't know how to nurture, take care of myself. Over a year ago, I was adamant that it was time to change my story around exercise. And that's happening with the help of a personal trainer. Even deeper 
is the pain and shame of my story around eating and cooking, nurturing myself. It's time now to change that story too. I believe that we are divinely protected and divinely directed. I also believe that when the student is ready, the teacher appears. That's how Colette and Deborah and my personal trainer came into my life. And that certainly explains what happened on July the 9th. A friend on Facebook posted a photo of a turkey burger that she had made saying, oh my God, this is the best turkey burger I have ever had. Thank you for this amazing plan and recipe. My relationship with the kitchen is transforming. Well, that caught my attention. It did look very good. A plan and a recipe? and her relationship with the kitchen is transforming, I wanted to know more about this person who helped her. So I checked her out. She is a holistic nutritionist. Interesting. After hemming and hawing over it, over it and questioning the wisdom of such a drastic move and questioning my own readiness, I emailed her on July the 10th. It was really difficult to click send, but I did. Writing that email brought up some deep feelings, a lot of fears, and a few tears. I was feeling pretty vulnerable when I sent it, wondering, what have I done? But as the day wore on and as I talked with a few people, I was reminded that regardless of my history, I am not my story, and that it's time to tell a new one, just like I did with exercise. I cannot do this alone. I have an appointment to meet with her on Monday. I pray that with her help, I will have the courage to take this next step on the long journey home. Martin Lass says, as we learn to love ourselves, the essence of all healing, we simultaneously become aware of the love around us that is and was always there. Yes, my past, my history, that was then. This is now. I'm older, wiser, and I'm beginning to learn how to nurture myself, discovering the treasure within, coming home. I will not find the love that I seek somewhere out there. It's been here all along, right within my own heart. The longest journey and perhaps the most difficult we will ever make is from the head to the heart. The time is now. The Lord has gifted us with Chiron. We need to see ourselves as the Creator sees us, with eyes of compassion and love. We need to give ourselves permission to feel our pain, to come out of hiding, to be honest with ourselves and others, to speak the truth, to give voice to our woundedness, to embrace it and to love it to healing and to life, to rewrite our stories to bring our stories into the light, to be healed and to heal others. We need to pray with open hands, allowing the Creator to take away what we don't need and to gift us with what we do need. It's all in divine timing. That's the gift of healing that Chiron brings to us and that we in turn can bring to the world. The heavens are indeed telling the glory of God. I pray that Spirit will strengthen you and bless you with her power for your inner self to grow strong, rooted in love, faith, hope, and trust. And I'm just going to check to see if anybody's with us right now. Nope, that's okay. If you are ready and would like to explore the healing that Chiron wants to bless you with, ask me for a reading. I'd be most honored to be of service. And if this has been a benefit to you and you know of someone else that we could help, please share this video with that person. Blessings to you and yours. Talk to you soon. Bye.